The biggest challenge that we're facing today is how, how do we use energy? How do we extract it? How do we produce it? How do we, um, how do we transport it and distribute it and deploy it? How do we do we need the energy? How do we do that in a way that uh, without, without compromising the values of our nation, without poisoning our children, or compromising the, the aspirations of the future more coal out of West Virginia than they were in 1968? The only difference is back then, at least some of that money was being left in the state for salaries, pensions, reinvestment in the community. Today, virtually all of it goes straight up to Wall Street. The corporate headquarters of Arch Coal, Massey Coal, Peabody Coal, and Consolidated, all of these companies are out of state interest. 95% of the coal in West Virginia is owned by out of state interest. It's the richest state in the country in terms of resource, but it's also it's the 49th poorest in terms of the poverty of its people. Because of all that money, faith of the public trust resource of our society, you'll see the erosion of uh, uh, the disappearance of transparency in government and democracy the capture of the agencies that are supposed to you know, uh, protect us from pollution, the, the regulatory agencies become hand puffing us through the regulation. Much greater geothermal resources than they have in Iceland. Um, we're number two in the world for geothermal. My home in Mount Kisco, New York, is powered by geothermal, <coughs> by you know, a heat exchange. And virtually every home in this country could be um, outside of the major cities, but it, it's a resource that's almost completely unutilized. Um, we are number two, one or two in the world, depending on who you believe in solar energy. We have, um, the Scientific American just did a study that showed we have enough solar, harnessable solar power in just 19% of the most barren desert land in the desert southwest. An area 75 miles by 75 miles to power 100% of, of, um, of the United States electric grid. We have, we're number one in wind by far. The, we're the, we're, North Dakota actually is the windiest place on earth at sea level. Um, but the Great Plains and Saudi Arabia of wind. We have enough wind. The Scientific American just did another study that showed we have enough wind just in Montana, harnessable wind in Montana, North Dakota, and Texas to provide three times the energy need for the entire North American energy. Yeah, even California, California is already, uh, is I think a year away from putting meters in everybody's home, smart grid meters. Um, this is going to happen across the country, where the you know the grid will the utility will be able to go into people's homes. And, you know they make contracts with people, and instead of hitting peak and, and turning on these very inefficient um, gas turbines, antiquated gas turbines, and burning a lot of energy that way, wasting energy, they'll be able to go into when they hit peak for those 15 minute you know uh, spikes. You'll be able to go into a million homes and turn off your hot water boiler for 15 minutes or go into your uh, cars, your electric car, your plug-in hybrids and borrow, buy energy from that, store energy in your car battery, in the, the individual car battery of millions of car owners across the country. Turn off your electric toothbrush holder or your, you know, your swimming pool recirculator, all these phantom charges in our homes. And you do that, you have to, I never have to go to peak and stabilize market capitalism. Um, I believe it's the solution to our environmental problem. But the marketplace is not a god, it's a tool. You know, you wouldn't worship a hammer, you would use it to build something really good for your kids. And, and when we build a marketplace, we have to make sure that the rules are aligned with the public interest. That they're not designed just to make a few people very wealthy and impoverish the rest of us and give us an inefficient system, but rather they're designed to enhance democracy and to enhance you know, community and our public values. And you can do that. What you need to do is build a marketplace, a rational marketplace, a marketplace that does what a market is supposed to do, which is to reward good behavior, which is efficiency, and to punish bad behavior, which is the inefficiency and waste. Right now, we have a marketplace that is rigged by rules that were designed by the, written by the incumbents and are designed to reward the dirtiest, filthiest, most poisonous, most addictive, most you know, destructive fuels from hell, rather than the cheap, clean, green, pure, wholesome, and a create a marketplace that turns every American into an energy entrepreneur, and every home into a power plant. It allows us to power this country on American initiative and intelligence and entrepreneurship, but Franklin Roosevelt called American industrial genius rather than you know, Saudi Arabian oil. And I, I'll tell you this, I have a, I told you I'm, I'm on the board of management, we have about 40 portfolio companies on the, in the energy, mainly in the energy, but also um, water purification, other sectors, even agriculture. But, uh, one of our companies, 
and I'm on the board of this one, so it was called Bright Source. And Bright Source builds solar thermal plants, the biggest solar thermal uh, plant co co company in the world. And there's a, there's a lot of other ones. But um, we're building right now, we have contracts with Pacific Gas and Electric. Solar thermal, incidentally, is not solar voltaic. So a solar thermal plant is a mirror farm in the desert. So they take a turbine from a power plant, like a gas plant or coal plant, and they put it up on a tower, on a scaffolding. Then they surround it with concentric rings and these giant mirrors that are manipulated by computers to always shine the sunlight on that turbine. And a half an hour after the sun gets up in the morning, that turbine's at 750 degrees Fahrenheit. It's oil. very efficient. Once you go to the oil plant, now you have to go to Saudi Arabia and punch holes in the ground and bring up the oil, refine it expensively, and then you have to genuflect the sheiks who despise democracy and are hated by their own people. And then you have to pay $100 billion a year to protect the pipeline, and then you get periodic wars that cost $4.3 trillion, which is what OMB now says that this one's going to cost. Then you have to escort the ships across the Atlantic with military escorts. Then you have to spill this stuff all over the Gulf and all over valleys. <laughs> then you burn it and poison everybody in America. So the big costs occur and for, to completely replace our system in this country, our carbon system, decarbonize our country, it's $3 trillion. That's less than the price of the Iraq war. And then what happens? We have free energy forever. 